President Mohamed Buhari on Tuesday said his regime has done extremely well, considering the limited resources available to it. The president spoke during a stakeholder meeting at Imo State Government House in Owiri, the state capital, after inaugurating the Owiri Alu Road. Please, uh, this was phase one of the Owiri Yukikwe Road and the State House of Assembly Complex, rebuilt by the administration of the state governor, Hope Uzodima. Now, he said his regime was able to achieve much despite the scarce resources at his disposal. He extolled the regime of, uh, for dislodging the Boko Haram terrorists in the Northeast and tackling infrastructural decay, which he said he inherited from the People's Democratic Party's administration in 2015. Now, while saluting the Imo State Governor for prioritizing construction and institutional reforms in the, phase, or in the past three years, the president said his regime will leave a legacy of major development projects across the country. Joining us to discuss this is Tunji Abdulhamid. He's a legal practitioner. Alester Wilcox is a public affairs analyst and a chartered accountant. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Alester. Thank you for having me. Great. Great. Uh, Tunji, I'm going to start with you by, because we're assessing Mr. President, um, for every time um, we get close to an election cycle, um, there's a need for uh, that assessment to happen. And Nigerians always ask the question uh, when pr the president says, well, I've done well. My administration has fared well. We've done this and that. But let's start with the first thing that the president has said. Looking at the resources that are, were available, according to Mr. President, they've done remarkably well, um, being that this administration may not be swimming in much money as, of course, the Jonathan administration or even the previous administrations. What are your thoughts? Uh, it, it's, la it's laughable for Mr. President to say he has done well. Not even done well. He said he has done extremely well. I, I, don't, I don't understand what the president is talking about, about that. Though it's his opinion. He has an opinion to say whatever he thinks. But as far as, I'm, as, as, far I, as I know, a student will not be the one to mark his scheme and give himself a score. You do your exam and you leave the result to the to the to the to the, to the, to the what's it called the examiner or the, or the lecturers to, to mark it. And in this instance, the Nigerians are the, are, are the examiner and they were the were the were the, were the lecturers who mark the script. For me, as a person, I the president has not done well, not even extremely well. If I have to mark the president and give them any 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 any, any percentage, I will give the administration 30 percent, which is a, below the pass mark. The, the president seems to have forgotten that the basic responsibility of the government is to provide security and welfare. I have not seen that security available in this country. Yes, yeah, the president said, uh, alluded to the fact that uh, Boko Haram and, the, and the whatever has been, has, been, has, been, has, been, has, been, has been taken away from Konu and the Adamawa, but the offspring of, of Boko Haram are now giving us problems. Kidnappers, bandits, everywhere. If you, at that time, the, 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 the Boko Haram was suited only to Bonu and Adamawa, but today, all everywhere in the country is not safe. Nobody is safe any longer. And that is why the infrastructure being led to by the president, because it, it includes uh, the rail, rail line, which has been abandoned for now, at Aguja Cardinal Road, has been, has been suspended for, because of the Boko Haram uh, the attack, which is an uh, insecurity. The other, the other area the president will talk about, the infrastructure is talking about, the Lagos about the express road, one, just 127 kilometers out of about thousands of roads in Nigeria. And the president is saying he has done well. The president is talking about uh, the Second Niger Bridge. Out of how much? The president got over 40 mil trillion debts. In pure about 40 trillion debts. Aside the money being generated within the, within the country. This government has given us a tax. So many in so many areas. And they, they were still generating money. Today, they are complaining. Initially, they were complaining about uh, the, fair, uh, the low price uh, fair, fair. Today, we are any more. Nobody is any that. I have not, to me, vis are vis what is on grant, vis are vis the amount spent, vis are vis the, the responsibility of the government, which is by section 14 of the two, which is to provide the power responsibility to provide welfare and security, the president has not even done well, not to talk of SMLA well, as far as I'm concerned. Are we being fair to Mr. President and his administration when we say nowhere is secure? I mean, you're calling me from a secure place, I presume. Um, so I'm guessing that some places might be um, secure. Uh, there might be other issues that the president raised uh, that we might not agree with, but in terms of you know everywhere being insecure, 
I mean, are we being fair here? Uh, 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 and even, even the Mr. President cannot dare to travel from Lagos to Ibadan without escorts. Talk to us of Tunji as an individual. You, I am in my house. In my house, I'm even afraid. Is, is, should, should we be rooted into, inside our house or houses? We you can't travel anywhere. You'll be scared. Alessa and some other people, Alessa cannot go to uh, those states on, on road without, uh, without being uh, scared. You and cannot go. Toji cannot go. And we say everywhere is secure. What, what, what is secure in that one? When you cannot even travel. The president, I'm, I'm, I'm very sure, since the president became uh, uh, the president, he has not traveled from Lagos to Ibadan by road. He didn't even know how the road is. So he, can, he can't tell me he has done well. That, that. As far as I'm concerned, the basic responsibility of a government is to provide security and welfare. If you match the government in that respect, the president has failed. If you provide it, let, let him admit, let him admit that the president has, has provided infrastructure. Infrastructure that, that, that cannot use. What is, the, what is the benefit of that infrastructure? The, 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 the Abuja Cardinal Day now was suspended for, for a while just because of, that, of, of attack, insecurity. The Lagos, if I road they are talking about, as far as I'm concerned, I travel that route almost every week. It's, it's just 70 or 80 percent uh, completed. 70 percent. And, the, and it's, it's just, it's, it's not done yet. And the, I, I, don't, I don't see that one as, as, as a, something that one you be boasting of and say, I've done well because I've done it by the Lagos by the road, because I've done Second Niger Bridge. Out of how much? Okay. Out of how many years? Hmm. Okay. Out of how many, how many, how many loans? 40, 40, 40 point something trillion. Not to talk of the entire data revenue. Okay. Billions of, that trillion of naira. And you say you have done well. It's not, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, the president is not, is not, is not telling himself the truth. Alester, I'd like to bring you in here. The president, of course, knew what he was dealing with when he said he wanted to be president in 2015 and he got that mandate. Um, he did promise us that he was going to fight insecurity. Now, he said also in this speech that he's been able to dislodge um, Boko Haram. Uh, he's talked about, you know, the issue of infrastructure. He's also talked about the meager fund that was available to his government and that he's done well, extremely well, I might add, um, it, you know, dealing with the country. But then we all know that it's not been really rosy for Mr. President. Um, but maybe the president is in a, a position to say, well, I think I did the right thing. I think I've done well so far. I didn't even presume that I'd be able to reach this mark. And, and so I'm wondering why Tunji would say that um, the president hasn't done anything. Maybe in, 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 from your perspective, you'll be able to give us more light. Um, well, when I was very cringy when he came and I heard Alessa. This was Alessa. Uh, so already he knows where I belong. And uh, I like his ranting. Uh, he says he's not safe. He seems not to be safe. I'm very, very safe. Um, so I, I, I don't have any issue with, uh, with being safe. He said I cannot travel. I, my family lives in the Badon, and I go to Badon virtually every weekend. And uh, I drive down. I live in Potakot, but I'm from Potakot. I'm from Ibadan. This year alone has made four trips on by road to Potakot and back. Uh, December is through. So if it's not safe, and he's telling people that they are not safe, he am safe. I, I'm not. I, I mean, if Tuji goes to Oyibo, Oyibo today, he will count how many vessels that are going to Sokoto, Kanu, Kaduna, Katsina that left today. So I say nobody is traveling. I'm sure if he goes to Jibobu tomorrow morning or uh, Charity Bottom, any of those places, even at Ajia, he, will, he, will, he, can, he, he cannot count the number of vehicles that will load and go to the east, north, Abuja, everywhere. And he still says he's not safe and still nobody's traveling. That shows the mindset of Nigerians. It's not similar to my friend on the video. That is Nigerian mindset. But why do you think Nigerians have that mindset? Because Nigerians would never, not just have wake up and have that mindset, should they? about your country. And all you have about your country is woo, 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 woo. Just keep, just keep expanding, expanding negativity. And that makes you happy. And you say you're not safe. My dear brother, I am very, very safe. I travel, and uh, God has been my protector, just as he has been from time past, he's going to be. And Nigerians are traveling. Now, let's, let's say the what the president said. He said he has done extremely well in infrastructure. And no... Even the blind that live in this country after 2015 know the state of our infrastructure in Nigeria. Even the power infrastructure. Everybody that is true to his conscience 
or to his God or to the human being that will, that will tell you the state of infrastructure in this country. He will tell you how Lagos Ibarez first will work. He will tell you how Lagos Binance first will work. He will tell you how on the town, on the go, on the go, He will tell you how Kanu Kaduna Road. He will tell you how, he will tell you how on your, on your Bumashaw Road. I'm not working for government. I'm not, I'm not working for around government. But you see, when we don't appreciate something, and all we see is evil, well, then you will keep flipping what you are seeing. It's just like when the first spies went to fight the land of the, of the, of the Canaan, and then, then came up with bad reports. What did they get? They got bad. The two that came up with good reports, I did not enjoy the land today. Is there the children? They said, I'm not here the last today. So, please, gentlemen, the president said he has done well in fact. And the problem is too. You never knew anything about rail. Uh, if I don't let go, uh, if, if I don't let go with the four, this, this you are born. Have you ever known such a rail line? You have never known that. that, that, that so, let's say you're trying, you're trying to tell us started. that there have yes. never been yes. train services yes. in yes. Nigeria yes. since yes. Nigeria yes. became yes. a country, yes. but that the Buhari administration yes. was the yes. first yes. administration yes. to introduce rail lines to us as a country. Is this a joke? It has been there on audio. Uh, every government comes, they promise it starts with seven major bridge. And you see that this is something that somebody is doing. And every day, you are seeing the progress of work. You are, I mean, before now, you cannot come from. For one more year, so Enugu, they try today and see how good. Even so, even though that the people of the South is so much hate this man, but yes, when they come on that road, they still admit that they are got something for them. So, so uh, we are uh, talking about uh, income, this and this, what is on ground. Okay. When they came in, all your friends were so low, it's not because of this Russia you pay war, that you are getting a, 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 a rest time with all your price, which is our main thing. Alessa, Alessa, can, I, I, can I come in? I, I, yeah, can I come in? Because um, I, I like where you're going. But I, I mean, I'm, I'm interested in the parts where you say since we were born, if we've ever heard anything about this rails or the rail lines. I'm certain that you know that we've had train services in this country before the Buhari administration came in. And, that, and let's not forget who started that before Buhari decided to complete it. That's one. Secondly, when we keep talking about infrastructure, we just talk about, you know, roads. We keep talking about the um, express ways that government... I mean, this is what taxpayers' monies are meant for, right? Why should of we be course. rolling... I'm sorry, of just course. hold on, hold it's on. Let me, get, let me get to my point. Should we be well, rolling out the drums because somebody used our monies that he's supposed to use to fix roads for us? Should we be rolling out the drums? Again, do you think that this is what Nigerians want? Just infrastructure, and of course, in his words, dislodging Boko Haram. At this point in Nigeria's life, what do you think that we need right now? Is it what Mr. President has given to us? And should that be something he should be applauding himself for? Uh, Miriam, the biggest room in the world is the room for improvement. I'm sure you know that. Now, nobody's saying if you can't beat Trump, and the Trump and the president is not asking to go and beat Trump for him because he did what he's supposed to do. He's only telling you what he has done based on what is available. It is not that every time that every month the American president comes up to tell you how many jobs he has created. Is that what he was elected to do? Every time they will tell you what they are doing. Because when the public, if you are not living in Medugri before 2015, if you are not living in Medugri, you will not understand how the, the poor of Bono are feeling today. You will be here using your Bono data to abuse and say nothing is happening. And the man that is living in Medugri at 2015 and today will tell you a different story. So he needs to speak it out. Look, he said there was a line, one locomotive line, which was not even functional. Lagos in Bado was the He had a locomotive line. So this, this local train that goes from, from Ido to Alag Bado, with people on top and everything. Have you entered the new train? This is a project oh, yes, conceived. Conceived from a conception. They inherited the Kaduna Kanu. No, sorry, the Kaduna Abuja, the Abuja Kaduna, which Abacha started. They inherited it at about 90% completion, completed it, and launched it. Now, they started the Lagos Ibadan from scratch. 
And today, and today, those who are using that service will not say what you are saying. Okay. It is their work, and they are okay. doing it. Okay. And when it is being done, and you are not acknowledging it, whether you are deriding it, you are, you, are, you, are, you are talking it down, as if nothing is happening. Okay. You are talking it down, you are deriding it. Your military men are out there taking the Supreme Prize for you, and you keep criticizing them, oh. saying they're doing nothing. Uh, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm not sorry we were people. talking about military men here, but Come you on. haven't really totally answered my question, but I think Chunji wants to come in here. Yes, I want to I, come I, in. I, I, Alessa I is talking as if uh, before the Bali administration, there are no roads in Nigeria. As if Bali was the one who, 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 who built all the roads in Nigeria. I, I, I Every successful government has been doing roads. Can you let him speak, please? Every successful government in this country has been doing roads. There are times when you cannot go to Benin, you spend hours. The roads are free before Bradley came into power. And it was it was free by somebody. They are, if you, you, you don't hear complaint of roads in the north. It was done by a government. So when you when the government came into power, borrowed 40, 40 trillion plus, did a, and he's saying he did the by the Lagos by the road, and he did the one how many kilometer rail. The Lagos by the road is just one hundred seven kilometer. He did the second Niger bit that has not, not, not been even completed. Out of how many years? Eight years, and out of how, how much? And you are saying he has done the patrol. It's what, it's what kind of infrastructure is that? When you are looking at the infrastructure, you are it's like me. It's uh, like Anne giving me one million naira to buy, uh, giving ten million naira to buy a car for her. And I said to buy a one million naira car. And you are not it and just say, hey, maybe somebody that don't buy anything for you. Have you done well? No. You have not done anything well. You have, you have, you have, you have not done anything special. Road have been, every social government have been doing road. Every social government have been doing uh, one thing or the other. Since the 70s, rail have been there. It's been working. So it is not a new thing. And the one that has been done by this government now is being abandoned because of insecurity. So I don't see how I should be placing president or is prepared. If I in any event, the president cannot be the one to determine whether or not he has done well. It is Nigerians. And as far as I'm concerned, if you do the the the, the what's it called? The the assessment by from the people, you the result you will get will surprise. Well, how much is the Gary the boy the, 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 the in, in, in the market? How much is dollar today? Okay. How much was it? When, when Gentlemen, dollar I'm going power? to bring you back to the question that I asked because Alester, I, I would really need Alesta to answer that question. I will need for you two to answer that question. At this point in the life of Nigerians, is it... What do you think that we want right now? Because Alesta is happening on what Mr. President has said. Fine and well. He's a supporter of Mr. President. He's saying what the President has done is fine, it's well, and Nigerians need to be applauding Mr. President. But what do we need right now? And, and do, can we really look back at the seven plus years that President Buhari has led us to say he did something and, that, and, and, and he's level, left a legacy that we'll continuously remember him from, for, I beg your pardon. He promised to fight um, you know, corruption. We don't know if he has more than doubled as we speak. Um, he promised to fight insecurity, but he has sp spearheaded into you know, a hydra-headed monster. Um, he promised to deal with um, un unemployment and underemployment and create jobs. I do not know if this government has been able to do any of that. So the question I pose to both of you gentlemen, the elections are around the corner. What should Nigerians be expecting? Because again, the president's party is fielding another candidate and so are other po political parties. What should the average Nigerian be looking for? Is that for me? Yes, please. You go first. Okay. I, I think yes. Most times, you people in the media, you do what they call anti-air... Alester, please analysis. answer the question. We're tired of this story that you make up about I'm the media. Please answer the question. Answer question. Yes, answer question. but you always look Why for a way to not answer the question and bring the media into it. Please answer the question. What do you think that Nigerians will hold as a legacy for the Buhari administration? The media is not your problem. Please tell us what your government will leave as a legacy. Quickly. Go to where I ask what they say. Go to where I ask what they say. You think you think you think performance is only by the price of rice? If it's not price of rice, then the PDP, your former government that you support, they work fully. Because nobody took over rice, then Abata would have been the same. Because at Abata time, rice was eight hundred dollars a bag. In fact, if the if if, if, if the price of rice is the basis of judging the government. Look, you look at it holistically. Do you know how many jobs are created when the the rail lines are built? Do you know how many jobs are being created when the specials are being built? Do you know how many jobs people are having when they are building the Southern Niger Bridge? You don't count these things. You, you, you sit in your office, 
and you are taking social media. You are an accountant. Can you give us statistics as to how much job creation has come under the Buhari administration? I'd really like to hear from you because you give us all this information. You seem to have it. What is the pound's weight against the dollar? Does that make the British government a failure? What is the pound against the dollar today? Alessa, no I, really, I really would like for you what to tell me what will be the legacy for the last time. What will be the legacy of the Buhari administration the after 2023? What will be the legacy of the Buhari administration after 2023? I think, I think you do not have an answer to my question, Alester. So I'll toss it to Tunji because we're almost out of time. I have fully answered your question. All right. All right, all right. Go ahead, Tunji. As far as I'm concerned, what Nigeria needs now, we need a government that knows what, what, what our problems are and who will deal with the problems, not the one that will complain. And but Nigerians, about Nigerians know their problems. Politicians are part of Nigeria. We need solutions. We need solutions. So, we need so, that, people that will bring solutions to us, not people that will complain and talk about... We, if, if, if PDP that were there before now have done well, the people will not vote for APC. They will allow them to continue. So we all know that, that somebody else came into power, probably the people are not satisfied, and they say, go. So that's if compl start complaining, complaining for seven years, will not solve any problem. As far as I'm concerned, Nigerians need people who, are, who, know, who, know, who knows their, their problem. And Why can these people be problem. found? Because again, it seems like the system keeps throwing up the same group of people. Yes, we hear it's, it's all of we, these promises, but at the end of the day, we, we, we don't even get a pinch of all of the promises that were made. So again, we're not here to talk about our problems. We know the problems. Who brings the solution? And again, I asked Alester this question. What, what will be the legacy of the Buhari administration after 2023? I, there is no, there is no other I don't know any. I don't know any. There are, there, I, you talk about employment now. We have more unemployment than even people that have employed. People that lost their job are many. So I don't even know what the only legacy that I can see from the president is drawing us back. That is legacy I know I, 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 is, 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 that is glaring. No other one is glaring. The, what we have been drawn back to the, to the ages, those olden ages where we are doing the way uh, it was done at that time. But, so as far as I'm concerned, you see, we will, we will still have to throw, the system will still throw out the same people for us because most of us are not interested in this. We don't see governance as our problem. We all should be involved in it. And, and see it as our problem, not politician's problem. We are all politicians. We also be politicians. Because we all, if you are interested in governance, you are a politician. So except if you are not interested in government, you, are not, you cannot say, you can say you are not a politician. So we all need to be interested in it. We not, need, need to not to vote based on sentiments. We need not to vote based on the, on the ethnic uh, or religious sentiments. And we look for people who can solve our problem, who can give. I know, I'm, I'm, I will not be surprised. This campaign, that won't be issue. It will still be normal. Dancing, drumming, and the chanting, and that, that's what we're going to see. And government and people will be satisfied. Everybody, no matter what you say, people have their mindsets. They fought based on sentiment. They fought based on religious. They fought based on this and that. Until we change those mentality, we can't get it right. Well, I want to say thank you. Tunji Abdulamin is a legal practitioner. Lester Wilcox is a public affairs analyst and, of course, a chartered accountant. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. We will have these same kinds of conversations going forward. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, that's it on the show tonight, but before I go, I would like to give you my take. Now, in the course of any campaign, an incumbent is prone to exaggerations of his accomplishments and even wild embellishments of the fact. The lack of transparency and accountability in Nigeria makes it almost impossible to judge an elected official on his merits. Now, bragging about what you've done may typically be frowned upon, but for the sake of convincing an electorate to continue to put its faith in a ruling party, it's par for the cause. Now, there is a reason the job of a leader is never done. No matter where in the world you go, the innumerable um, you know, wants and needs of people make it impossible for everyone you know, to be pleased. And long-term projects tend to only pay dividends long after the administration of the originator of those projects might well be over. But no matter how forward-thinking we want our leaders to be, a good leader must find solution to some problems that the people are facing in the short term. It is not for the leader to pat himself on the neck or on the back and, and grade his efforts as job well done. That is for history to judge. 
And that's what our president and all the people that will come after him should do. I'm Mary Anacom. Have a good evening.